Previously on my channel, I flew on a Boeing 717 out of Atlanta, but I was really disappointed that my window seat's view was obstructed by the aircraft's rear mounted engines. But for this video, I'm about to fly out of Atlanta again, this time on a 737-800 and to another Florida city, Daytona Beach, and yes, I'll have a view this time. Everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm flying to Daytona Beach from Atlanta on a Boeing 737-800. You're coming along with me. World champions. I have not been on a Delta Airlines aircraft with an actual logo on it other than a SkyTeam aircraft. Today I'll be flying on a 737-800 that's dedicated to the Atlanta Braves winning the World Series in 2021. As an Atlanta headquartered carrier, Delta has a long-standing partnership with the Atlanta Braves, so it was nice to see the two come together on this plane. Delta is the official airline of the Atlanta Braves, transporting them for over 50 years. But today I'm leaving Atlanta for Florida, and I can't wait to take to the skies again this morning. So come with me and let's head on over to DAB from the ATL. Other than the Atlanta Braves logo up front, this is a standard 737. I've posted videos about flying on them before. While I normally sit ahead of the wings, today I'll be taking a few more steps down the single aisle of this Boeing today. I'm going to the back of this 737, next to last row today. All right, first step, open up the window. Unlike my last flight on the 717, there's no engine blocking my view. The interiors of these old 737-800s are a bit dated with small screens, but I'm not here for the interior. I've got a window seat. I'm happy that I've got a full view with some 737 wing action today. And today, I'm just one row away from the last row of the airplane. So have any of you been on the 737-800? I've flown on this aircraft a couple of times. Let me know what you think of this airplane. Oh, and just so you know, the bad hair, I just got off of a red eye from the West Coast. I'm connecting here in Atlanta, so I've had a long night. It's time to call the ramp controller for clearance to push back from gate B5 onto the wide ramp before we begin our taxi to the runway. Like many of my videos, I'll be providing transmissions from the flight deck. Today our call sign is Delta 2939. Ramp Delta 2939, Bravo 5, pushing the varsity. Delta 2939, I have company push tail south at a 45 out of Bravo 9, so could you confirm with the ground crew if you have room to push tail north at a 45? Sorry, stand by. The captain checked with the ground crew, and it turns out that there's enough room for us to push back. Ramp Delta 2939, they said they have room. Delta 2939, copy that, push tail north at a 45, there's four in queue. Tail north, 45, Delta 2939. With four aircraft in queue, we're cleared to push back, and once the tug is removed, we need to be in a position where our tail is facing north and our nose is facing south. While all of the runways head east-west, traffic on the ramp moves in a north-south flow to get to the runways, which are on both the north and south sides of the passenger terminal and ramp area. The ramp between the multiple concourses is quite wide, but this is the world's busiest airport, and even though the path was clear when we pushed back, eventually some traffic appeared on the ramp. We can't start to move until the ramp controller allows us to do so, and she has the complete picture of what's going on on the ramp. I noticed quite a few aircraft on the ramp once the tug was removed, and the pilot is about to let the ramp controller know that we're ready to taxi. Ramp Delta 2939 is ready when you are. Delta 2939, after Southwest clear, right wing south, ground point 75, good day. After Southwest clears, uh, right side, ground point uh, 9, Delta 2939, good day. We can't begin to move until Southwest clears, and at that point, we can work our way to the active taxiway and contact the ground controller and the tall air traffic control tower for taxi instructions to the runway. There's Southwest, which is starting to move out of the way, so we can begin moving under our own power for the first time. If you ever look out your window and see a plane blocking your path, it's all coordinated by the controller. 
We can now move ahead and contact the ground controller for taxi instructions. Ground morning, Delta 2939, 3 south with Sierra. Delta 2939, ground, good morning, 29 left in section Mike 2, taxi via Mike. 9 left, Mike 2 via Mike, Delta 2939. We're told that runway 9 left will be our departure runway today, and that we'll be entering the runway on taxiway Mike 2, which means that we will not be using the entire runway for takeoff. To get to taxiway Mike 2, we're told to take taxiway Mike. Once we get closer to the runway, we're told to monitor the frequency of the controller responsible for a runway 9 left. Dallas 2939, Monson Tower, 123, see you later. After hearing some silence on the radio, our pilot decides to check in with the tower. Hey, tower, Delta 2939, we're with you, uh, short of Mike 2. Delta 2939, 9 left of Mike 2, line of point. Uh, 9 left, Mike 2, line of point, Delta 2939. Because of light traffic, we're given takeoff clearance right away. Delta 2939, RNF to Grits, 9 left of Mike 2, clear for takeoff. RNF Grits, Grits, 9 left of Mike 2, clear for takeoff, Delta 2939. Now that we're airborne, the tower controller tells us to contact the departure controller. Delta 2939, contact departure, have a good one. The departure could be Delta 2939. Let's check in with the departure controller. Departure Delta 2939, with you uh, 22 for 10,000 on the varsity. Delta 2939, We checked in with the departure controller indicating that we were on the varsity. This is the name of the RNAV departure procedure that we're flying this morning. When we were issued takeoff clearance on the previous frequency, the controller mentioned RNAV to GRITS, which is part of the procedure. This procedure is designed for flights that are headed towards the south and will eventually be making a right turn to head towards the south where our destination of Daytona Beach is. In my last video, we flew the same departure procedure, but the engine of my 717 completely blocked my view. The turns that we make on this procedure are all done on our own. It's now time to get assigned a higher altitude. Delta 2939 coming to 14,000. 14,000 Delta 2939. And now as we climb higher, we enter the airspace of the Air Route Traffic Control Center and are asked to switch to this center frequency. Delta 2939, contact climbing center 1937. 1937 Delta 2939, good day. The rest of the flight was uneventful as we headed in a southeastern direction towards Daytona Beach. While there was a cloud cover over much of Georgia, I didn't care considering how bad the view was on my 717 to Melbourne right before this trip. Check out that video and you'll see why I was so disappointed. This flight is taking a similar route as my flight to Melbourne, but this flight is shorter. I even got to see some air traffic while at cruising altitude. We just started our descent to Daytona Beach. And with this descent, it's time to bring a new approach and new airport to this channel. Today we'll be flying the Thor 3 arrival procedure, which is a route from the north to Daytona. The majority of airline flights to Daytona come from Atlanta and Charlotte, and arrivals from both cities typically fly on the same arrival route. We're under the control of the Jacksonville Air Route Traffic Control Center, and we're now about to enter the Sunshine State. The break in the land and water opening up to the ocean represents the border between Georgia and Florida. On the right side is Florida's Amelia Island, a barrier island, and the first community that we see there is Fernandina Beach. From there, we fly out over the Atlantic Ocean as we continue our descent on the Thor 3 arrival.
It's time for some air traffic control again as we prepare for landing. We've been talking to high altitude center controllers and as we get lower and enter the busy airspace around Daytona Beach, we need to talk to specialized controllers in the area. We're about to check in with Daytona Approach Control as we descend via the Thor 3 arrival. Let's check in. Daytona Approach, Delta 2939 with the 14 8 descending via the Thor 3 and we have Delta. Delta 2939, Daytona Beach Post, Delta 3011, Beta Delta, Delta Spec, Beggars Fish Post, 7 left. All right, Delta 3011, no plan for the visual, 7 left, Delta 2939. Now, I mentioned this is busy airspace. Why? Well, Daytona Beach is home to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, and this school has a Department of Flight. With over 80 Cessnas and other aircraft based there, there are always pilots flying into and out of this airport. Recently on my channel, I've not just been adding air traffic control communications with the Flight Amman, but I've been including transmissions with other aircraft, and I'll include some of them in this video. Why? To show you how our 737 needs to be vectored in to land among the many student pilots. After all, this channel focuses very heavily on how airspace works. Embry Riddle pilots use the call sign Riddle. Here's one now. We're to 481 Riddle contact in South Daytona Beach Airport. Turn right, make a right hand turn to heading 070. Maintain 7000, Vector 7 left. 481, right 070, maintain 7000, Vector 7 left. Are we safe to be going to be? Accordingly, I clear this speech via turn right, make a right hand turn to heading 070. Seven zero, maintain seven thousand. Forty one, we're making our right hand turn to zero seven zero, maintain seven thousand. But it's not just Embry Riddle aircraft in the area. Check out this one below us. That was a corporate jet out of Jacksonville. But Riddle is clearly the king of this area. For a four thirty, turn left heading one zero zero. For a four zero one, turn left heading one four zero. For a four zero one, one four zero. The next few transmissions have to do with Riddle traffic in the area. Riddle 815-815, traffic 2 o'clock, 3 miles southwest, miles of Cherokee, 1000, indicated landing, Spruce Creek. Riddle 815, looking for a distraction. Riddle 816-816, just use caution, company 815 is on the frequency. He's going to be over at the tower here in just a minute, though. Six, I'm sorry, can you tell you again? I was just letting you know there's a similar sounding call sign on the frequency. Your company 815 is also on the frequency. To Iowa, listen carefully. Riddle 815, we have that traffic in sight. Riddle 815-815, Roger, contact tower, 118.1, let them know you have the traffic. Riddle 815, 118.1, we'll let them know. And now it's time for us to get clear down to a lower altitude. Delta 2939, to maintain 4,000. 4,000, Delta 2939. The lower 4,000 foot altitude gives us the opportunity to see things like this. But we can't keep this heading forever. It's time to turn inland. 190, Delta 2939. There were so many transmissions going on on the radio that I wasn't able to capture everything that was being said to our pilot. And here's some more riddle transmissions. Riddle 444, left 160. Riddle 430, descent approved, tower 120.7. Riddle 430, descent approved, tower 120.7. As we turned, I had a great view of Ormond Beach, which is just north of Daytona Beach. I love being able to see the Barrier Island and the Intercoastal Waterway, which runs 3,000 miles. With the wind coming from the east, I knew we'd be making left traffic to the runway, so I chose to see it on the left side of the plane for a view of the airport before I landed. But as we got closer to the airport, I missed seeing the airport because of clouds. The airport is located right next to the Daytona International Speedway, home of the world-famous Daytona 500 NASCAR race. I wish I was able to see them. I could not believe how busy the approach controller was. I even missed hearing some of the transmissions to our flight, but I knew that we'd have to head inland towards the west, then make a left turn to land on runway 7 left, the longest of three runways at our destination airport. Just as I was getting excited to see the airport and the speedway, we flew into the clouds. All right, I'm going to let you in to some of the ATC transmissions on the local frequencies. These controllers are really, really busy. Approach, guys, 51654, 2000. Remember, 51654, Daytona departure, radar contact. Clear to Daytona via radar vectors, turn right, getting 100, zero, maintain 2000, vector on S7 level. 100, zero, 654, and uh, vectors on S6. Okay, it's, well, it's my understanding you wanted to do another on S7 left. Did you want to do the on S6 instead in the Spruce Creek? We're going to do, uh, that was correct, We're, vectors for the 7 left is what we're on now on a 1. Five zero heading, and uh, yeah, we're gonna come back around for one more, and then you can send us over to the creek after that. Okay, and are you gonna want an approach into Spruce Creek? Affirmative. So seven left and RNF six uh, six five four. November uh, six five four.
four, Roger. November six five four on the missed approach, runway heading two thousand back to this frequency. Frequency six five four. Good approach. Good morning. Little four seventy is level at six thousand five hundred, about six and a half miles to the southwest of the land. We have Delta. I'd like to request four four IFR to Daytona. Little four seventy one RNAV seven left. Little four seventy. Yeah, we'll take the RNAV seven. Little four seventy two altimeter three zero one zero maintain BFR. Squawk zero two seven one. Zero two seven one. Little four seventy. Nine five four four two left in course for Marathon Connect Orlando approach one two four point eight twenty four eight. Twenty four eight on course. Thanks much. Anytime. Number six five four. Uh, frankly, we're just too busy right now to do a practice approach over uh, into Daytona. What's your next request? You want to do something in New Smyrna, maybe? Yeah. Can you give us a second here? It'll be something in New Smyrna, then back to the creek. And um, thank you. For, we'll accommodate however we can. Okay. Just let me know. Sorry, we can't accommodate you right now. No, that's right. I appreciate everything you guys do for us. Uh, we'll get back to you. All right. Did you hear that? That pilot's request was denied because the controller was so busy. With so much general aviation traffic, it's a big task for the controllers to get our large and fast-moving 737 to the runway. The flight school and GA traffic is slow-moving but abundant. In order to get to the runway, we need to make a series of left turns issued by the approach controller. The smaller airplanes are doing things like touch and goes at the airport and practice landings. Oh, and there's skydiving nearby. We're either northeastbound or northwestbound to see how the uh, land jump zone area. Roger, Little 470. Um, we're now going eastbound and we're south at the land, so both of our heads to both the airport It's fine. Just northeast or northwest, just don't go to the land for skydiving. And expect radar notification about uh, two more miles once you're in my airspace. Roger, thank you, 470. And there goes those Riddle planes again. Riddle 885, squawk 0106. Riddle 885, radar contact a mile north of Massey. Just proceed southbound for now. I'll have a turn northbound to join the roads for you in just a moment. Riddle 885, southbound. Riddle 816, contact Tower 118.1. Contact Tower 118.1, Riddle 816. Here's an interesting sight. Lafayette Landings Airport, which has an airport code of FD-90. This is a non-towered airport that's private. It's 11 miles east of Daytona Beach Airport and has a 3,200-foot-long turf runway. I'm glad there was a break in the clouds for me to see this. We're getting closer to lining up with the airport. Here's a few more Riddle transmissions. Riddle 820 will follow company 11 o'clock, 2 miles, turning northbound, 1,500. Riddle 820 will follow traffic. Riddle 470, Riddle Contact, 3 South, Delancey Airport, clear Daytona Beach Airport, via heading a 040, call maintain 7000, practice the RNF 7 left. Clear to Daytona Beach, the uh, Riddle Vector 040, climb maintain 7000, Riddle 470, thank you. Riddle 466, turn off heading 160. Left heading 160, Riddle 466. Riddle 48, turn off heading 100, make sure you're in runway 7 left. Riddle 41, turn off heading 290. 481, turn off 290. Riddle 822, turn 10 degrees to the right. Riddle 822, 10 to the right. Riddle 885, tower on 118.1. Riddle 885, tower 181, Riddle 822, traffic 2 o'clock, 1 mile eastbound, 9 or 100 indicated. Riddle 822, got traffic in sight. Riddle 822, thank you. Turn left heading 070, join the road 7 arrival. Left heading 070, join the road 7 arrival, uh, Riddle 822. The pilot of our 737 has reported the airport in sight, and ATC clears us for the approach. 2939, clear visual approach, runway 7 left. Delta 2939, contact tower 120.7, good day. Targeted Delta 939. We're now clear for the approach and acknowledge the handoff to the control tower at the airport. We're now perfectly sequenced in with all of the riddle and other traffic and can proceed directly to the runway. Let's check in with the controller at the top floor of the control tower at the Daytona Beach International Airport. Tower Delta 2939 is on a visual 7 left. Delta 2939, Daytona Tower, only 7 left, clear to land. 7 left, clear to land, Delta 2939. Let's proceed straight in and land.
to 2939. Taxi, if you can, uh, just make a left turn on the Whiskey now. Left turn on the Whiskey and taxi to the terminal via November this frequency. Okay, Whiskey and November to the terminal with you, Delta 2939. Welcome to Daytona Beach. Well, it was a short and pleasant flight. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today. For your website of the state or country of your destination. If you or anyone in your party has any questions, I'd be happy to assist you if you're traveling. Dunlap. Dunlap. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, consider subscribing by clicking on the subscribe button below. There'll be many more videos like this in the future. Thanks, everybody.